There are few games that look to touch upon complex topics of human existence. There are some that lightly touch upon it, only to refrain from probing deeper. But every so often, we get to have a game that not only dares to question our existence, but its own. In 2014, the computer role-playing games genre was about to make a comeback. After many years of a sleeping market that rarely made the news, it was its time. The time to plant the seeds that would grow into a more mainstream appeal that we see today. Divinity Original Sin was a make-or-break game for Larian, which inevitably led to their success with Baldur's Gate 3, almost 10 years later. It saved their development studio and put them on the map to become one of the most prestigious game developers active today. But there was another game that was fighting for the very soul of the CRPG genre around that time. It was the fight for a studio that asked its fans to push a game across the finish line. A fight for the soul of the isometric CRPG games. And a fight to understand the meaning of soul in the world of Eora. That game was Pillars of Eternity. In the world of Eora, the soul isn't just a concept that people toy with to ponder on questions of their existence. It's something palpable, something verifiable and quantifiable. Imagine one's soul as a piece of bark upon a river, faintly navigating through its currents, never knowing where it will end up on. You might go into many different streams of the river, but you might also get stuck on a rock for a very long time. This metaphor represents a flawed reincarnation, where maladies of the soul can stop one from being reborn into the next life. From the first few hours of the game, you have a basic concept of how the souls are reincarnated. After the body dies, souls go into a stage between life and death called in between and through the power of other pillars that are present all over Eora, they can be guided into the beyond, where they eventually will be cycled back to life once again. In the world of Eora, the science of the soul plays an important role in healing the sick and developing new sciences and technologies. The practitioners of animancy conduct many experiments to both help and hinder the souls in Eora many times with unpredictable results. While animancers use science and technology, there are others born with an innate talent to manipulate the soul. Those are watchers, gifted seers capable of perceiving, interacting and in some cases affect the essence of the souls around them. This is who you are when you play Pillars of Eternity. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! With this level of dedication to the knowledge of souls, you'd think it would be a simple concept to grasp for the people of Eora. But you'd be wrong. Because the people of Eora live a lie. The Anguitians, an ancient civilization that lived long before the modern days of Eora, tried for many years to find the gods, to find who might hear their prayers and return their souls to Eora from beyond the veil of death. 
Their search led them to scour the world for any clue, any link, any indication that would lead them to learn the true meaning of their existence. But they found none. They found there was no creator, there were no gods. No one was listening to their prayers. Only the will controlled the flow of souls in a flawed and unreliable system that was perceived as a natural process of the world. Souls could just as easily get torn apart as they were allowed to carry on to the next reincarnation. If this knowledge ever came to light, Eora would end. Armed with the knowledge and desire to optimize the flow of souls and take control over the river where they flowed, the Inguitians built machines, sacrificing the souls of thousands of their own people. They empowered these machines to work like dams on the river of souls and take control of their destiny upon the will. They replaced the false idols that the world prayed to with their own. New gods born from their own people's souls and their fate would spread across Eora. Gods that would embody aspects important to civilization. Gods that would hear your prayers, steer your soul through the will to further their agenda or provide boons to their followers. All while feeding off the parts of the souls that would pass on the beyond. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. Soon, the fate in the old gods faded away. The Inguitians became their own gods in the search for the meaning of souls and safe reincarnation for themselves. While their history and legacy faded from memory, they remained the gods in the machines that controlled the river of souls. Gods to their descendants that knew nothing of their origin, until you, the Watcher, learned the truth. While this story is ultimately about finding the truth about the gods of Eora, it's just the thread that guides you to learn more about its people and what the soul truly means to them. It doesn't take long to learn that the soul can be a potent aspect of their lives or the downfall of an entire civilization. You are quickly introduced to a crisis in Deerwood that immediately showcases how maladies of the soul can spell doom. An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. Three bells toll only for the death of a Raderick. I fear Lord Raderick's heir is lost, or else hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Mothers all over Deerwood are giving birth to children without souls. They are born silent, with no awareness or reaction, incapable of surviving even when cared for. Popular belief leads locals to blame this illness on a god that once had his avatar destroyed by a bomb designed to stop his conquests of Deerwood. Many have sought to stop this illness, and Animancers almost achieved it. They placed the souls of animals into the newborns, and that process made them responsive. The new science was hailed as the salvation, until the children reached puberty and their souls turned wild, transforming them into monsters. Thousands of these children still roam the wilds, preying on anyone that crosses their path. Your fate, as a Watcher, is entwined with the resolution of this crisis, and it's through your exploration of Eora that you'll find the truth. In its most introspective questions, Pillars of Eternity asks if the existence of meaning is tied to a higher power, if the meaning is quantifiable by one's soul's worth or by its soul experience on each reincarnation. But what of the soul of this game? 
To me, it embodies the soul of the CRPG genre in the modern days. And to answer why, we first need to define what the soul of a game is. Don't worry, I'm not about to get metaphysical or religious on you, but to take the discussion further, we need to be on the same level. The soul of a game is the essence of its vision, principles and execution, while the soul of a genre of game is the attempt to honor the genre, not replicate the games within it. To put it simply, for a game like Pillars of Eternity to be the soul of CRPGs, Obsidian had to look to the past games within the genre, figure out what made them tick, and determine which aspects cast the genre in the best light, while also providing a much needed modernization to it. Josh Sawyer, the lead designer in Pillars of Eternity, said as much. Soul is elusive. So let's talk about soul, which is this very ephemeral thing. Uh, when people remember the things that they love, their memory can be selective, they can gloss over a lot of things, and most of what they remember is uh, their emotional attachment to it and little things that stick out to them. Uh, the individual elements that go into it contribute to the whole picture. So when you modify things, you have to be very careful about what you're modifying. You could tweak one tiny thing that turns out to be a very key component of what made that something very cool. Uh, and ultimately, the spirit of something is more important than actually getting it technically accurate. And in many cases, it's healthier if you're trying to modernize a game. But he also went to say that Pillars of Eternity was a compromised game, as it had an obligation to the fans that wanted an homage to the old Infinity Engine games rather than see design improvements. So rather than an evolution, we got a reincarnation of the same type of game, albeit with enough difference to make it its own. We could say that the development of Pillars of Eternity and its attempt to remain a soulful representation of the CRPG genre directly led to asking the same questions about maintaining one's soul inside the game world. Are you defined by your experiences in each reincarnation? Or by the entirety of the soul that aggregates them? Is the game's soul defined by the CRPG features that made the cut or by the ones that didn't? They are all very interesting questions for you to discuss within the community and the comment section, but don't let me distract you from the facts that you, watcher, are evil. Back when the Inguitians finished their ploy to create gods, many missionaries spread the word. But there was one that discovered the truth about their creation before you did, Watcher. Yovara, a missionary that by chance uncovered the truth, left the fate of the Inguitians in order to spread the word about their false gods. Some followed her, but these would not go unpunished. The gods need to be reminded that we have a spirit, and that spirit is proof against their power. They have the power to manipulate and confuse and ruin us, but not to change our will. I will remain here until the world crumbles and fades from existence with joy in my heart, knowing I've shown them what they truly are. The Leaden Key, an organization created by Theos X Arcanon, one of the Inguitians couldn't take the chance of their master plan failing and the gods being uncovered as false. They enacted an Inquisition, which burned all of the heretics that shunned their gods. A young Inquisitor lured Yovara into a trap that would bury the Inguitians' secrets along with her soul for many years to come. Many turns of the wheel would happen until you'd be able to recall your past life, Inquisitor. You lured Yovara to the trap, perhaps by fear of Theos, or in search of meaning with the new gods. But you betrayed her. It wouldn't be until your soul was awakened, and you started experiencing your previous life through visions, that you'd know the truth. You might be thinking why I'm sharing so much of the story and major reveals within these spoilers, rather than keep them for you to experience first hand. And the truth is, I'm desperate for more people to love this game. 
and because even knowing everything there is to know about this game, what it will mean to you will be entirely different. It's not the major story reveals that make the game great, it's the questions you ask yourself while you experience them. There are many CRPG games that allow you to react to the story as a character in it, but there aren't many that would be able to ask questions that will still linger in your mind afterwards. I'm not by any means saying that Pillars of Eternity is a pioneer of this, but I honestly believe it's a game that executed on that premise perfectly. They didn't just want you to experience the game's story as a character within it, they wanted you to question yourself on the choices that you make. With half a million copies sold, it didn't get as big as other RPG games did, and that's okay, I made my peace with it. But I urge you to give it a try and ask yourself, what does the soul of a game represent to you, and the evolution of games as a medium for stories and introspection. We don't get the luxury of having many CRPG games, but we get the privilege of having games with a soul that will take with us into new journeys. Thank you all so much, I hope you liked the video, if you want to see more about CRPG games, consider checking my Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader review. I hope you have a lovely day, and bye bye.